Welcome to the Alpha channel. Today we're gonna geek out over some camera footage comparisons. We're comparing the A7S III's internal 422 10-bit codec to the Ninja 5's external ProRes RAW. All of the footage is ISO 12800. I wanted to make the noise differences between the two easy to see, but keep in mind the A7S III does a significant processing and noise reduction on the internal footage. So I'll show the internal footage compared to the raw footage with noise reduction applied in post, as well as uncorrected log footage and footage with LUTs applied. I'll also show you some footage that I applied some color corrections to. For some reason, it seems like there's a color shift between the Ninja 5 and the internal codec. Um, I don't quite understand it. If there's a colorist watching, perhaps they can uh, explain that better in the comments. So without further ado, let's dig into that footage. So you can see with this first clip, I just applied a LUT. Um, the ProRes RAW footage is converted to S Gamut 3, S Log 3 by Final Cut Pro X. Here I have balanced the color and the exposure. And you can still tell a slight difference, but it's pretty close. And when you look at it like this, it's very hard to tell the difference between the two. Here I just wanted to show how far you could push each codec if you try to up the exposure or lower the exposure. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions on this one. And in this clip, we're going to do some pixel peeping to really dig into the noise differences. Now you can see there's a huge difference between the noise performance on these two, but keep in mind that the internal codec has been processed by the camera. I actually like the texture of the ProRes RAW better. I'm sure that's because there's more color information. And now with Final Cut Pro's noise reduction applied. It's definitely better, but Final Cut Pro has some severe limitations and this is one of them. It actually shows how impressive the A7S3's internal noise reduction is. It's removed almost all the chroma noise and the luma noise which is left over looks like film grain. Which brings us to my conclusion. So I like the latitude that ProRes RAW gives me. It can be interpreted to match any camera's log. There's more color information and ultimately you can make more choices. However, this also requires much more processing. ProRes RAW forces me to use Premiere Final Cut and as a DaVinci Resolve user, this is extremely frustrating. Though the internal XAVC codec technically has less latitude, my main takeaway is how impressed I am with Sony's internal codec. At the lowest 100 megabit per second long GOP 422 setting available on the A7S III, it still held its own against ProRes RAW HQ, which has a staggering 20 times higher bit rate at around 18 1800 megabits a second. It also just works in any NLE. The fact that ProRes RAW doesn't work in DaVinci Resolve is a huge drawback for me. Well, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please let me know in the comments. And if you did not, please also let me know that. Thanks and I will see you next time. Hey guys, welcome to the Alpha channel. Today we're going to S3's internal, seriously, seriously. We're gonna be diving deep into some technical. Hmm. But we're going to be delving into some deep tech something, uh, technical shit. Mm. <sighs>